So the first thing we'll do is we'll unbox it. Again, look at that. The razor knife just comes right through. That's beside the point. Inside, another box. They didn't even bother to close the tab. Uh, probably shouldn't have done that, but let's open that. Comes the little instruction manual. And wow, it's actually in English. From what other people I heard, it's in uh, Chinese. Little pad of foam here. Soldering iron stand. And heat gun accessories, soldering accessories, heat gun stand. Is the unit itself very nice? Oh shit! I probably shouldn't have dropped that ceramic Ugh. heat gun. Now the heat gun's a lot lighter than I thought it would be. The whole uh, system is a lot lighter than I thought it would be. This is an extra heating element for the soldering iron. I'm going to stick that back in the styrofoam. And yeah, it's a soldering pen. And here I have no idea what these are. Anything else in the bottom of the box? Nope, so you can just set the box aside. Okay, so this is what we have. A word of caution here. Before you do anything like turn it on, oh, I probably should be banging this around, but M5X10 marked. Houston, we have a problem. I'll get back to you when we uh, get those done. Okay, so after removing the pump securing screws, in this case they were M5 screws, uh, that were 10 millimeters long. There's only one of them this time. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's three. I checked. This is the only M5 screws. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to attach the heat gun. Now, in this case, I'm going to attach it to the left side. And you can see there's already screws in there for that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew these two uh, M3 screws. Yes, they're, Chinese are quite fond of metric. I'm going to use one of these screws to hold it in place so I can get the seconds of screw in. In this case, my long nails will help me out here. this docks up here correctly and you can see it fits perfectly in there although in practice you're supposed to have them the other way but I don't want this thing getting me in the face so I'm going to do it the improper way but it can be configured to work either way after installing the heat gun mount now we're going to install a soldering iron so unbundle it. Now in this case, the soldering iron uses a DIN 5 connector. Connect right there, 5 pin DIN. So line up the little horseshoe. That's what I call it. I'm not sure what it's actually called. The keying pin is actually what I would, is actually what it's called. It's a nice snug fitting connector. Put the little securing bolt in and take the little uh, sleeve off the soldering iron. Oh, 
Well, you look at that. That's pathetic. There we go. That strain release was a bit loose, but no biggie. Now, this also comes with an assortment of soldering tips. In addition to, I think this is some kind of a, an excuse for an IC polar. In here, this little wire thing, and I don't know what this little plastic piece is. Oh, it comes with a little screw. Ah, I see what this is. Might as well assemble this little tool as well. Assembly of the IC puller is pretty straightforward. What you do first is you add this little screw into this little plastic stick. Quite a tight fit because it's eating right into the plastic. That's a bit cheap, but hey, what do you expect from China? So. Now, do not screw it in completely, as you just slide this little, this little tongue piece thingy, whatever it is called, the wire piece. And there we go. Looks menacing. Now, we've got the uh, soldering iron holder. This is much bulkier than the heat gun holder, but kind of cheesy. It does have a piece of uh, what looks like galvanized steel on the bottom. This way, solder drippage won't eat straight through your plastic. The soldering iron just goes in like that. Though it's a bit loose if you want a snug fit, pull, that, pull back this little uh, rubber sheath. Just a little bit, and you don't have to do it by much. That fits snugly. It's better if I show it on the camera. And then, yeah, this little strain relief thing is keeps coming. I should put a little daub of glue there or something. Maybe not. But yeah, you'll wet the sponge when you're soldering, and I think it's about time we uh, test it out. Okay, first we'll do a smoke test. Smoke test is where you plug it in and see if it explodes. Soldering iron's heating up. Shut up, Sierra. Let's turn on the heat gun. It's very faintly humming. Kind of hard to see because the light's hitting it, but the heater is starting up. Now the soldering iron is at 266, so let's get some solder. In this case, it's going to be using common tin lead solder. Ooh, smoke. That ain't no good. Is that just burning off as residual? It says 378. Well, let's see if the soldering iron works good. Yeah, that ain't no good smell. Well, it definitely is uncomfortably hot. Turn the compressor a little bit. Ooh, yeah. Well, that's a heat gun. Let's see if the soldering iron solders. Ah, oh, and yep, it does melt solder. Go pss, pss, clean this, clean the soldering tip a little bit. So yeah. It works pretty good for the soldering iron. Let's shut that off because that's not what I'm really after. Oh, I shut off the heat gun. I'll just turn off the soldering iron. 
Oh, I forgot to put a tip on the heat gun. Boom. There you go, you see that package just got dislodged? Ow. Probably shouldn't be touching that because it's still 350 degrees Celsius, so. There we go. As you can see, the heat gun works for surface mount reflow. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you then. Bye.